In order to achieve maximum student engagement, we must first ensure that they're actually paying attention in the first place. Challenging enough in a regular school year, but in this Zoomified virtual classroom of a year that we've just come through, heck, let's face it, you're just another app on their screen. So how do we make sure we're the most interesting app on their screen? And now that some of us are coming back to an in-person classroom, the most fascinating person in the room. How do we get our students' attention and and keep it. So I was having a bit of a back and forth the other week with a rather challenging student of mine. Terrific kid, super nice, but very easily distracted and finds it very hard to focus. And he had turned in an assignment only half completed. And I sent it back to him via the old Google Classroom and said, buddy, this is only half done. And he immediately sent it right back to me with no more work being done. And I sent it back to him again saying, if you leave it like this, it's only going to be a 50%. And he wrote me back and and he said, that's okay, that's all I need. And I was just kind of struck dumb for a moment by this mentality, thinking, well, that's all you need, 50%? And I wrote him back and I said, buddy, are, are you really gonna go through life only doing 50%? And he said, yeah, probably. And, and I wrote him back again and I, and I said, but you're capable of so much more than that. And he wrote me back and said, no, I'm not. And it blew me away. This kid is 10 years old and he has absolutely no belief in himself, more than 50%. Somebody taught him that. And this is why it is so imperative that when we are teaching these kids, we bring everything we can to the table. We cannot skate by on 50%. We have got to bring the passion and we have got to bring the fire because we are teaching some of these kids who have no self-confidence. And if we can get them even a little bit interested by our passion and our interest and our fire, then maybe we have a chance at redirecting their life just a little bit. Now, of course, this student of mine is not the only one out there easily distracted. Squirrel! In fact, here in middle school where I teach, distraction seems to be a specialty of theirs. And again, the year that we've just come through has offered no shortage of distractions. Just being home is a distraction. You have parents doing housework, talking on the phone. You have siblings running around, arguing, playing. You have dogs. You have cats on the table, bowls of cereal. And let's not forget, bum, 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 the itchy finger. Oh, Oh, Mr. Y will never notice if I open up another tab and I'm watching YouTube or uh, playing Among Us or Minecraft because it's gonna look like I'm staring right into his classroom even though I'm watching something completely different. So how do we maintain their interest and attention? How do we keep them engaged through all this chaos? Well, we need to be bold, we need to take risks, and we need to be willing to teach beyond our comfort zone. So when students are not engaged, when students are not paying attention, you have one of two directions to go. You can snap into super serious teacher mode and say, you must listen to me because I am the teacher and you are the students and I am right and you are wrong and you must do what I say because I'm in charge, so listen up. And what's the first thing they're gonna do? They're gonna stop listening. They're gonna check out even more. So why not take the opposite approach? Bring the fire, bring the passion, be a fool, be ridiculous, crank it up to a spinal tap 11 every single day. Because the thing is, even if they think you're a complete fool, they will pay more attention because they want to see what's going to happen next. They will remember you. Now look, you don't have to be Robin Williams out of Dead Poet Society. You don't even have to wear shirts like this. But whatever you do, bring your own version of the fire. You have a reason that you got into teaching in the first place. Bring that passion. Show them how interested you are in the subject and I promise you they will become more interested themselves as a result. So one of the ways that I did this began before classes even started. I have a long background in theater and magic, and I utilized these to create a sort of kooky Hogwarts type professor named Professor Crookleshinks. And I sent them a video with Professor Crookleshinks about a week before classes saying, I'm very, very sorry that Mr. Youngren cannot meet with you in person. In fact, I'm very sorry that nobody's going to be able to see anyone in person this year because of this dreadful virus that's going around, but that does not mean mean that we can't create magic right through the computer screen. Can you believe that we can do that? 
And then I went on to do an online magic trick because I wanted to show them that even though we are going to be separated until further notice, we are still going to be interactive. They are not going to be sedentary, passive observers on this ride called ELA. They are expected to be involved. They are expected to be engaged. And by presenting it in this kind of fun way with this Professor Kukorsings, I think it kind of also gave them the mindset that the class was going to be fun because we can't forget the fun part. Some people believe that if we're having fun, then we're not learning. And I absolutely 100% wholeheartedly and vehemently disagree. Another thing I do is I start off each day with kind of a pseudo dance party. I'll start some music playing and I'll slide into frame with my cool guy sunglasses and then I'll change into my teacher sunglasses uh, like Mr. Rogers used to change his shoes, you remember that? And uh, sometimes I'll even solicit a song from the students the night before. And boy howdy are they excited when I choose their song. Man, I was excited when I found out a student of mine got a record player for Christmas with ZZ Top and Metallica L. Peace. That kid is being raised right. But the thing is, I start off with the energy up. I start off with it high and I don't give them a chance to tune out because from the get-go, we are hitting the ground running. Students have been through a lot this year. Heck, teachers have been through a lot this year. The whole world's been through a lot this year. And we have got to remember that. Even though some of them are coming back to in-person school, they have still been through the ringer. And so we need to keep it on the upbeat. We need to keep it fun. We need to be silly. We need to be a fool. We need to push ourselves past our own comfort zones. Because what's gonna happen as a result Result is the kids will see us engaged, the kids will see us passionate, and the kids will see us being willing to be silly. And maybe as a result, they'll start taking more chances themselves, they'll start thinking more outside the box, and they'll start living more outside their own comfort zones, when prior to that, they might not have. We have got to be very, very sensitive to what these kids have been through this year, and we have got to rebuild their confidence because so many of them have been so disconnected and isolated for so long that now they're getting back into an in-person classroom and they're getting face-to-face. -face. A lot of the social skills have diminished as a result. So if they see you coming out of your shell more, if they see you cranking it up to an 11, if they see you taking risks, it might just encourage them to do the same things themselves. And when they find out that nothing bad happens, maybe they'll take a bigger risk next time, within reason, and maybe their confidence will grow a little bit more each and every day. They try and take a new risk on or do something they hadn't done before. So if they do start checking out, don't be afraid to personalize. Don't be afraid to call on them. I'm not saying call them out and embarrass them in front of everybody and say, hey, pay attention or you're never gonna pass my class for crying out loud. But say, hey, Susie, what do you think about what that character did? Or, hey, Bob, what about that plot twist? Wasn't that cool? And by acknowledging them and by listening to their voices and asking them to contribute, especially after the 2020-2021 school year when these kids are feeling so disconnected and so unrecognized and many of them so alone and quite often depressed, they're going to feel acknowledged. They're going to feel valued and they're going to know that e even if they don't think their thoughts are important, you do and that they are a valuable member of your classroom community. So look, I understand that not every teacher out there is going to care for this approach and that not everybody wants to be a big and loud and bigger than life wild and crazy guy like me. Not everybody wants to be Dewey Finn from School of Rock and that's perfectly fine. You have your own approach. You do you. But whatever it is you do, do it with passion. I know that there is a reason that you all got into teaching in the first place and it's more than just weekends and summers off. But even if if you're the shyer, more reticent sort, consider taking some chances. Consider making some bigger choices or at least doing something that makes you feel less comfortable because this is how we grow. And you're gonna find out that when you do take these risks, when you teach beyond your own comfort zone, that on the other side, you're just fine. And you might even be stronger as a result. 
If you got value out of this video, be sure to check out some of my other videos right here on Classroom Confidential, all of them designed with maximum student engagement in mind. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves, and take care of someone else. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.